Hello everybody and welcome to the final Woodcraft Workshop, the next step Woodcraft Workshop of this current series. As from the 26th of June, Friday 26th of June, we're going to go on to Zoom. So hopefully you'll join me for that and we'll see what we can do there. So uh, what we're going to do today in this final uh, edition is to finish off the stool that was made last week. Uh, we put the stool together, it needs to be um, sanded and uh, coloured or stained or whatever. So we'll be doing that and I'll take you through the, the process. It's not going to be very lengthy. Uh, hopefully you'll not be falling asleep. <laughs> okay, all the very best to you and uh, we'll, we'll work away. So with our stool from last week, what we want to do today is to finish it off. And that means filling in these screw holes, uh, which are all over the place. Uh, we'll do that first. We'll use a filler and a filler knife, and then we will sandpaper the whole piece. So I'll just get the, the filler. I'll just put the stool down for a second. And then I have the filler here. It's a Rustin's wood filler, natural colour. And the filling knife. So you just take a small drop of that and then just uh, just to fill the holes. Now I can see that the screw head of that is sticking up slightly. Um, not maybe a lot we can do about that other than put on additional filler and when it comes to sanding the filler just making sure we don't go down onto the screw head. Actually there might be one or two like that. So it does pay to make sure your screws are well put in. So I'll go on doing this off camera. There's no great skill to it. Just um, what I would say is always make sure that you have a little more in the hole than you need because you'll sandpaper it over. So just leave the filler to stand a bit proud of the surface of the wood. Now, I don't know if you can see but there's one or two marks on this stool and that's because since last week uh, when, it, when it was made, we've been using it. We've been using, we've had cups of coffee on it and it's become a bit uh, marked. <laughs> so, marked with everyday use. So, this filler's quite, this filler's quite old. Um, it's not brand new. Anyway, we'll just try and do our best with it. So I'll come back to you when I've completed the, the whole stool. I've almost completed, but what I was going to show you was um, there's a there's a line along here, and I've filled in most of it. But I'm just going to completely that. That's where the this top part and the sides met, and because of the I'd say because of the cupping of the wood, it just leaves a small gap. But we should be able to fill that uh, and smooth it, and we should be good enough with that. Now I'm going to turn it over because the other side actually isn't too bad. 
There's just maybe a small bit there. I'll put some in anyway, just to let you see that. That's all the holes and gaps filled. And um, now we must leave it till that dries before we do any sandpapering. So I'll come back to you when it's dry. Um, yeah, you don't want to have too much on it, you know, It's but it is a, a bit of a trial and error thing. The more you put on, then the more you've got to sandpaper off. And when it dries hard, it is actually quite hard to sandpaper. So, uh, but it's practice, you know, just give it a go. Okay, so we'll come back when that's dry and do the sandpapering. <laughs> For this next bit, I like to get quite comfy because it's uh, it should be a relaxing thing. Now, um, so we're going to just sandpaper over the bits we filled yesterday. And this is one of the nicest parts of working with wood. I think it's making it's making rough bits smooth. So right around the edge here where I've sawn it, it needs to be sandpapered. So, and of course my clothes are going to get in a mess, but uh, that's just the price we pay for filming away. I suppose if you put on your old clothes or an apron or something, that would be a fun. Particularly, particularly where we've cut across the grain here, it is quite rough. So I'm just going to walk away with this. Where this curve comes round, again, it's, uh, it's needing cleaned up. And any rough bits you see can be smoothed away. I'm using rough pan <laughs> sandpaper. It's called P60. Uh, the lower the number, the rougher it is. I've also got some other stuff which is 120, um, which is finer. But to start with, I would always use the kind of rough stuff. That takes off the, the kind of the, the most obvious uh, bits which are out of line and all that sort of thing. But really, go nice, go around all the edges, making them really super smooth. And then, of course, there's the bits that we, that we filled yesterday, or the last time, let's see. It's all nice and dry now, and becomes really smooth. remember I filled right along that line because there was a small gap due to the cupping of the wood. Now of course this bit in the middle uh, where we where we cut through that's quite rough. What I would be doing here is I'm going to take a new piece of sandpaper and a piece of dowel of some kind. I'm, going to, I'm looking round to find something. Something which is round. Well, I've, I've rolled this into... I've rolled this into a sort of a tube. That might do. But similarly, if you wrapped it round something, pencil might do. That lets you get that lets you get into the hole, and it becomes nice and smooth. So I'm going to carry on with that <coughs> off camera, and then we'll come back to you. The other thing we'll do is. Um, where there's pencil lines, you could try rubbing them out with an eraser. Of course, I was looking for a proper rubber or an eraser and couldn't really find one, which is the th thing about an artist's house. 
I never find a thing like a pencil or well I've got a pencil alright but I'm just using this this rather inadequate little eraser on the end but uh, yeah that's coming away quite nicely the other thing as I was sandpapering and I've sandpapered it all over with the, the coarse sandpaper is always remember to sandpaper in the direction of the grain if you go across the grain like that you're likely to scratch it and it's quite hard to get these scratches away so if you can always keep going with the grain that's the very best thing you can do so now we'll go on to the the uh, the finer sandpaper and I went into Drina co-op in Skibreen yesterday to get the sandpaper and they were almost sold out of sandpaper I had to buy this roll this meter length roll because uh, lots of people are, are decorating their houses they also had almost run out of white spirit now you'll notice that I use this pair of scissors to cut the sandpaper it's always better doing that than tearing it uh, as the person before me in the shop had done they'd torn it like that it's um it's kind of wasteful because now you now I've got a nice clean and sharp straight edge. Now I'm going to go over the whole thing again with the fine sandpaper and that'll give it a really nice smooth finish. So again I'm going to do this off camera because it's a bit like watching paint dry somebody sandpapering. Although you might think, well, I find it therapeutic doing it myself. You know, I, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy making the, the edges all smooth. But to the viewer at home, it's probably not the most exciting thing you could see on a film. So I'm going to stop it and come back to you after I've done that. And we'll go on to the next stage. Well, that's me finished with the fine sandpaper. You'll notice possibly, if the camera can pick this up, one or two really black lines. These are the lines which were made when I was using the felt pen and that was the, the idea for that was to be able to show up on the camera where you were to cut. So I can't really get rid of these lines. Um, it might demand an awful 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 lot of sanding. What I'm hoping is that the next stage uh, will cover that up to a good extent. Anyway, it's not meant to be a, a kind of Chippendale piece of furniture. It's it's a bit of a workaday thing. It's something that you can you can stand on, you can sit on, you can put your cup of coffee on it, etc., etc. It's 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 a to be a useful piece. What I thought I would do is to actually stain it now, uh, to, to stain it a colour. Um, I suppose to try and prettify it up in a sense. As it stands just now, it, would, it will function perfectly well. But to stain it, um, one, one that I've seen before is, is a kind of like a mahogany stain. And I suppose that lifts it to a, a, a better level. It's simply made, but it has a kind of a, a finesse to it. It's it's almost like we're giving it a bit of respectability with the stain. When I was in Drina yesterday, I tried to get some kind of stain varnish, a small tin, and they had none of it. So what I'm going to do is make up a colour. Using acrylic paint, I'm going to make up some red, mix some red and green, and we'll apply that. Um, so we'll move on to that stage just now. So I'm using an old hanky just to brush off all the, the sawdust and then we'll make up the colour. So the colour I'm using is red and green and uh, this was stuff I got from Lidl's so it's not that expensive but just adequate, adequate for what we're going to do. Um, as I say, you can buy uh, ready mixed stain varnish, but the, the shop was out of it. The beauty of this is you can kind of make it to your own, your own satisfaction. You can, um, you can just 
color it in a way that will suit you. So I'm mixing together the red and the green, which should give you a kind of a, a brown color. Uh, so I've got some water here and a brush. I'm actually going to pour some water into this because you don't want it. Too, you don't want it too thick at all because you want to be able to see the grain of the wood. Now, uh, I think I'll put a bit, a bit more green into it than that. So I'll put a bit more green. I might have put too much green, but that's the thing. When you mix in colour, you just keep on going until you get it to suit you. Now, I think that's all right, actually. It looks quite nice. And you put it on kind of thinly so that any grain that there is will show through. So there, we've got a bit of a mixture. And... Actually, that looks a bit grey. It's hard to see in this green tinted bottle. This was a, a Lidl's water bottle, which I find is very helpful for doing things like that. You just cut the top off them and you can use them for mixing. Right. I think that's a lot better. I'm going to add a bit more water. And then start putting it on. Of course if you added a bit of orange or yellow it would give it a, another dimension. Let me just try this simple colour first. So I've got a place to put my paint here. going to start away and see how this works. Mm -hmm. Don't mind that. Again, I would go, now I'm going to use a drop of water, go, whoops, oh, go with the grain. cat interested in what we're doing here. An important thing when you're doing any kind of colouring of wood that you've cut is to make sure, I mean these flat surfaces are fine, they're easy enough to do, but when you come to anything that's across the grain like this, that's much harder, <laughs> or can be much harder. So I would use a drop, of, drop maybe a drop more water to make sure that it really soaks in so again I'm just going to do this off camera so you get the idea of it and we'll see I promise if there's anything of interest as I do it anything special I'll stop and you can see it but I think it's just really a case of doing it Doing like that. Okay. Well, one thing I can see, and possibly you'll see it yourselves, where there's filler, it's a small bit, because the filler, remember, was a kind of a is clear is a kind of a lighter colour than the wood. The filler is less absorbent as well, so the way I'm going to get around that is just to put a bit of bit of um, un uh, undiluted colour where the filler is. Now this is not an exact kind of science, and it's very much going with the grain of the wood, but it's um, it should mask that to a big extent. I don't know if you can see here. I'm obviously doing it with the grain of the wood and the brush strokes themselves almost add to what we're doing to, to increase the grain. So very much, you know, going with the grain 
and adding my brush strokes to, to increase the green, as I said. That's everything pretty basically covered. Um, now I've gone with the green. You can see reflections on where the where the, the screw holes are and they've been filled. This is a basic coat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry and come back to it and apply another bit of colour on top. It's quite quick drying the acrylic. And you can see where brush strokes have almost <coughs> enhanced the grain that's already there and this is something you can keep going on and on and on doing you can make it as interesting as you like um, you can build up color now this is going to be kind of representing a kind of mahogany or, or dark wood but you could do anything on it you could you could paint a picture onto it you could you could paint it all one color you wouldn't you but but i think because it's wood it's really nice to try and make something of the wood that's there. So we'll come back to it when it's dry and uh, see what else we can do on it. We will be putting some coats of varnish on the top so it should have a bit of resilience. Okay this is dry now. Uh, what I've done is I've made up some more colour using some red and a bit of yellow. Now what this is going to have the effect of deepening the overall colour. Uh, so we'll, we'll apply this in the same way. And when, when you're painting, um, painting a painting, you sometimes put on layers of colour, one thinner layer on top of another, and you get added depth. Well, it's exactly the same with this. We're adding depth by putting on this layer of um, red mixed with a drop of yellow. So we'll get the dark colour that we put on first coming through but we're also going to get some of this richer orangey colour. I'm trying to keep it going with the grain all the time. I'm getting especially into the ends of any grain which is certainly around here and, and on the ends. So I'm going to work away on this off camera and come back to you. Another thought just occurred to me back there. Um, another uh, similarity you could say is for anyone who dyes their hair Sometimes if you dye it just with one colour, it'll come out obviously just one colour, but if you use, you know, I think you can get dyes, I believe you can. I don't do it myself, of course, but I think you can get colour where there's almost like added, um, I don't know, I don't know that they're highlights, but it's a variation and that gives you depth in your hair colour. So it's exactly the same sort of thing that we're doing here, adding this other dimension with a slightly lighter colour. And that's about it. Uh, now, I think it's come out quite a pleasing shade. Uh, I'll just go over this little bit here. You can keep on working away at it. And these marks, which where the filler had been, they're, they're, they're kind of gone now. Um, they're, they're, they're certainly toned down. And the other thing I noticed was that the felt at pen mark, which I showed you earlier on the... I think it's... <laughs> was it there? Must have been the other end. Yeah, you can just, you can just see it. Just see it there. But that's kind of disappearing as well, so it's, it's, um, I wouldn't worry about that. You know, that kind of shows a bit of the history of the piece, how it was made. But, uh, so the next thing is we'll be applying the varnish, but I'm just going to let that dry fully. To be a water-based varnish that we use, and, uh, yeah, this has to dry thoroughly for that. 
but I think that's quite a nice colour. And that's about it. Uh, now, I think it's come out quite a pleasing shade. Uh, I'll just go over this little bit here. You can keep on working away at it. And these marks, which where the filler had been, they're 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 kind of gone now. Um, they're, they're they're certainly toned down. And the other thing I noticed was that the felt tip pen mark, which I showed you earlier on the, I think it's, <laughs> was it there? Must have been the other end. Yeah, you can just you can just see it. Just see it there. But that's kind of disappearing as well. So it's it's um I wouldn't worry about that. You know, that kind of shows a bit of the history of the piece, how it was made. But uh so the next thing is we'll be applying the varnish, but I'm just gonna let that dry fully to be a water-based varnish that we use. And uh yeah, this has to dry thoroughly for that. But I think that's quite a nice colour. That's dried nicely. What I thought we'd do next, uh, now this is a bit of a, an experiment, a bit, a bit hit or miss po possibly, is to give a bit of a sand, light sandpaper uh, over. Now this has the effect of bringing out a bit more of the grain, so it should be even more interesting when we come to varnish it. So I'm just, just doing this a bit lightly. I'm not trying to do too much of it because I quite like it as it is, but it might just make it even more interesting if we can give it a bit a bit of sandpaper over. Again, I'm going with the green. You, you must not go anywhere else other than with the green. Hard to know if that's better or not. But the varnish will make something different. I see here in the corner I've gone through the paint into some of the filler underneath, which I didn't really want to do. I'm just going to give it some of the edges a bit of a going, going over. One thing this does, it sort of gives it a bit of an age. So we're kind of what some people might call distressing it. I've seen other people who would be hitting it with a hammer and all that sort of thing to get this kind of aged look. But we'll just stick to this. You can do this as much or as little as you like. And as I say, it possibly didn't need it, but <laughs> I just almost can't help myself. I want to try and see what happens when we see what happens when we do it. Now I, I didn't mind that. I've sort of rubbed and got a bit of an edge there. You never know until you try these things. Now, of course, if we didn't like this, we would just give it another coat of the the thin down paint. And the thin down paint I was using instead of stain, ready mix stain, because I couldn't get hold of any yesterday. And actually the thin down paint is a lot cheaper. And I think it gives you a bit more flexibility. Just accentuating the the hole by rubbing it there. Just rubbing at the edge. So I think I'm tempted to leave it at that and I'll go and get the varnish ready and give it some varnish.
That's dried nicely. What I thought we'd do next, uh, now this is a bit of a, an experiment, a bit, of, a bit hit or miss po possibly, is to give a bit of a sand, light sandpaper uh, over. Now this has the effect of bringing out a bit more of the green, so it should be even more interesting when we come to varnish it. So I'm just, just doing this a bit lightly. I'm not trying to do too much of it because I quite like it as it is, but it might just make it even more interesting if we can give it a bit a bit of sandpaper over. Again, I'm going with the green. You, you must not go anywhere else other than with the green. Hard to know if that's better or not. But the varnish will make something different. I see here in the corner I've gone through the paint into some of the filler underneath, which I didn't really want to do. I'm just going to give it some of the edges a bit of a going, going over. One thing this does, it sort of gives it a bit of an age. So we're kind of what some people might call distressing it. I've seen other people who would be hitting it with a hammer and all that sort of thing to get this kind of aged look. But we'll just stick to this. You can do this as much or as little as you like. And as I say, it possibly didn't need it, but... <laughs> I just almost can't help myself. I want to try and see what happens when we see what happens when we do it. Now I, I didn't mind that. I've sort of rubbed and got a bit of an edge there. You never know until you try these things. Now, of course, if we didn't like this, we would just give it another coat of the the thin down paint. And the thin down paint I was using instead of stain, ready mix stain, because I couldn't get hold of any yesterday. And actually the thin down paint is a lot cheaper. And I think it gives you a bit more flexibility. Just accentuating the, the hole by rubbing it there. Just rubbing at the edge. So I think I'm tempted to leave it at that and I'll go and get the varnish ready and give it some varnish. I'm using this Ron Seal interior varnish. It's it's what you know cleans off in water, so that's quite good and it dries quickly. So it's quick drying. So when you're varnishing, again, like when we were getting to this stage with the paint, follow the grain all the time. So it goes on a kind of milky color, but it'll dry clear. So don't have any fear about that. Uh, so I'm just going with the grain. Nice clean brush. It's actually the same brush I used for the colour but I've given it a good wash out. I'm doing the top first because I want to see it how, it, how it's turning out, but probably you might be better to actually do the inside first because I'm going to be in trouble when I have to turn it over. But as I said, it's quick drying, so, you know, half an hour or so it might be pretty dry, ready to turn over. We'll see what we can do. So, I'll just work away, really. Oh, there, there's a, it's an old tin, so there's bits of odd, odd stuff landing up in it. Uh, maybe, um, what do you call it? 
sawdust or something. That's why it's important to give it a good kind of dust off first. I used my hanky again just to make sure there was no dust from that sanding that we did on it. What we'll do after we've got one coat on is give it a very fine sandpaper or even wire wool because with the best wool in the world there's dust and stuff adheres to the varnish. Anyway I'll continue with that and come back to you when I've done a bit more or when I've finished. <clears throat> I'm just finishing off using this wire wool uh, and the wire wool just takes out any little imperfections on the surface. It's had its first coat of varnish <coughs> But the wire wool is ideal. It smooths out brush marks. Uh, with the best wool in the world there's always little bits of dust etc stick to the, the drying varnish. So the wire wool just helps to make it beautiful and smooth. So I've gone over all the surfaces with the wire wool and uh, the next thing to do is to give uh, another coat of varnish. Now you could give as many coats of varnish as you like using my trusty handkerchief again just to make the surface uh, and take the, any fragments of dust and wire wool off. Yeah, as I was saying, you can give it as many coats of varnish as you like. Um, for the purposes of this video, I think I'll just give it the two. Um, but anyway, I'll just apply this and uh, Again, just going with the grain. And yeah, there's nothing much to it, so I'll just do this off camera and show you the finished result. <coughs> so I'll come back to you shortly with that. I'm just finishing off using this wire wool. Uh, and the wire wool just takes out any little imperfections on the surface. It's had its first coat of varnish, <coughs> but the wire wool is ideal. It smooths out brush marks. Uh, with the best wool in the world there's always little bits of dust etc stick to the, the drying varnish. So the wire wool just helps to make it beautiful and smooth. So I've gone over all the surfaces with the wire wool. And uh, the next thing to do is to give uh, another coat of varnish. Now, you could give as many coats of varnish as you like, using my trusty handkerchief again, just to make the surface, uh, take the, any fragments of dust and wire wool off. Yeah, as I was saying, you can give it as many coats of varnish as you like. Um, for the purposes of this video, I think I'll just give it the two. Um, but anyway, I'll just apply this and uh, again just going with the grain. And yeah, there's nothing much to it so I'll just do this off camera and show you the finished result. <coughs> so I'll come back to you shortly with that. So there's our little stool finished off and um, as you can see it's all nice and dry and uh, ready to stand on or sit on as you like. Now as I said in the introduction this is the final Woodcraft Workshop video in the current series. There might be another one coming, but in the meantime, starting from Friday the 26th of June, I'm going to go into Zoom. So I'll be uh, working away on the Zoom from 12 o'clock till 2 o'clock, and everyone is very welcome to join in. And we'll see what we can do together. It'll be a different experience. Hopefully 
uh, we can work together to try and make something or help people out in one way or another uh, in woodcraft. So all the very best from me and we'll speak to you again. Cheers now. Bye.